friends, we shall study today the modeling of synchronous machine. Till now, the synchronous machine was modeled as a constant voltage behind direct axis tangent reactance. The synchronous machine modeling has been a challenge all through and lot of work has been done over the years to develop more accurate models of the synchronous machine. Today in our study, we will develop the basic equations of synchronous machine and then we will go to the DQO transformation which is also commonly known as Parkes transformation. Now, this synchronous machine has two major parts stator and rotor. We shall represent stator as provided with three windings and we assume that these windings are sensorily distributed. On the rotor, <coughs> we have a fill winding on the direct axis and we have amortizers or damper windings. In a synchronous generator, we provide dampers and these dampers can be represented by considering considering the amortizers located on the d axis and on the quadrature axis. Now, here in my presentation we will presume or we will assume one amortizer on the d axis and another amortizer on the q axis. The convention which we will follow here is that the q axis leads d axis by 90 degrees. Although there are some, uh, some uh, you know uh, cases where the q axis has been taken as lagging the d axis, but in IEEE standards. Uh, consider the q axis leading the d axis by 90 degrees. Now, here the d axis is along the axis of north pole, it coincides with the axis of north pole. Then we will measure the angular position of the angular position of the direct axis with respect to the axis of phase A of the stator. That is here, this straight line shows the axis of phase A and the, the angular position of the rotor is measured with respect to the axis of phase A and we call this angle as theta. Further, we will be following the generator convention. That is the stator currents are leaving the terminals of the machine that is I A, I B and I C are leaving the machine terminals. The, the rotor is rotating in the anti-clockwise <laughs> direction, this is direction of rotation of the rotor which we are presuming. Now, the currents in the rotor circuits are entering the rotor circuit. If you just see here this field winding, the current is entering the field winding and the applied voltage is EFD. The damper windings are closed circuits, amortizers are closed circuits, the current flowing is again into the amortizer winding closed circuit. Some of the important nomenclature are 
uh, will be used here. A, B, C stands for the stator phase windings, F, D stands for field winding, K, D stands for D axis amortizer circuit, K, Q stands for Q axis amortizer circuit. This K stands for 1, 2, 3 N, the number of amortizer circuits. That is, if I put one amortizer circuit on the D axis, K becomes 1, I can say 1 D. If there is one amortizer on the Q axis, it is 1 Q. Okay? Therefore, in general, the amortizers are represented by putting a subscript K D or K Q. Theta is the angle by which the D axis leads the magnetic axis of the phase A winding in electrical radians and omega r is the rotor angular velocity in electrical radians. The E A, E B and E C are the instantaneous stator phase to neutral voltages. That is the voltages which I have shown here, these are the instantaneous values and they are with respect to phase to neutral, there is a rise from neutral to phase. The instantaneous stator currents are shown as I A, I B and I C. The field voltage is E F D. The field and amortizer circuit currents are denoted as I F D, I K D and I K Q. The rotor circuit resistances will be denoted by R F D, R K D, R K Q. The R F D is the resistance of the field winding, R K D is the resistance of direct axis amortizer circuit and R K D is the resistance of quadrature axis amortizer circuit. Now, here as we will see that we have stator windings, we have windings on the rotor and rotor is rotating and because, because of this we will find actually that the we come across various types of inductances in the Sinkholz machine. The inductances are the self inductances of the stator windings, the, induct, the mutual inductance between the windings of the stator. Then mutual inductances between the stator winding and the rotor circuits and self inductances of the rotor circuits and mutual inductances between the rotor circuits. Therefore, we come across different types of inductances in the stator uh, uh, in the synchronous machine. They we represent this by double subscript same subscript L A A to denote that it is a self. L A A, L B B and L C C stand for self inductances of stator windings. That we will use double subscript notation to denote the self inductances or mutual inductances. If they are self inductances, the two subscripts will be same. If they are mutual inductances, the subscript, two subscripts will be different. Like say L A B, L B C and L C A stands for mutual inductances between the stator winding. That is L A B is the mutual inductance between stator A phase and stator B phase so on. Then L A F D, L A K D and L K Q represents the mutual inductances between the stator A phase and rotor windings. That is L A F D is the mutual inductance between the stator A phase and field winding, L A K D is the mutual inductance between the stator A phase and amortizer on the D axis and similarly L A K D. Then L F F D, L K K D and L K K Q represent the self inductance of rotor circuit. R A is the armature resistance per phase and we will represent this differential operator P which is your D by D T by the symbol P, P is the differential operator. <coughs> now, in the case of synchronous machine, the self inductances of the stator winding and the mutual inductances between the stator windings and they, they, they are affected because of the, the non-uniform air gap. As we know that the magnetic field produced by the stator winding, it passes through, passes through the stator core, through the air gap through the rotor iron, then air gap and again return back through the 
stator core right and therefore the 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 flux produced by the stator winding will be affected by the position of the rotor now here in this diagram we saw the variation of permeance with rotor position when you know that permeance <coughs> is the reciprocal of reluctance okay now here i am considering a salient pole machine and these are the pole location and we are just showing the expanded version now the permeance is maximum when the when the uh, or it permeance is maximum along the d axis or we can say the reluctance is minimum this graph shows the variation of permeance as with respect to the position that is angle alpha which is measured with respect to the d axis which coincides with the north pole axis okay now we can easily see that this is maximum position when it coincides with the q axis it is minimum when it again coincides with the d axis it is maximum and this variation is of the form p equal to po plus p2 cos 2 alpha that is when alpha is 0 <coughs> alpha is 0 its value is po plus p2 and when alpha is 90 degrees its value is po minus p2 right that is cos 2 alpha becomes minus 1 and it is this variation of this permeance right is having a strong bearing on the variation of self inductances mutual inductances and so on. now to understand the whole thing what we start with is we first write down the stator circuit equations the basic uh, stator circuit equations are ea is equal to p psi a minus r a i a e b equal to p psi b minus r a i b and e c equal to p psi c minus r a i c i a i b and i c are the instantaneous value of the phase currents and p psi a stands for d by dt of psi a psi a psi b and psi c are the flux linking phase a phase b and phase c respectively okay that will straight forward that the induced emf is d by dt of psi a and this will be equal to the terminal voltage plus the resistance drop or now this equation is drawn considering the generator action okay now here let us see actually that what determines the flux linkage in the stator phase winding the flux linkage in the stator phase winding can be written as psi a equal to minus l a a i a now here i will explain this minus terms but l a a is the self inductance of phase a l a into i a minus mutual inductance between a and b and multiplied by i b minus i a c i c plus l a f d i f d where l a f d is the mutual inductance between a phase and field winding i f d the field current similarly l a k d i k d l a k q i k q now since we have assumed in the basic model here that the flux linkages are shown in the direction opposite to the current and that is why actually the negative signs are appearing here that is in these terms you can just see these are the negative signs while the currents are entering the other three rotor windings therefore they are the positive signs now we will see that that this self inductances mutual inductances these are not constant these depend upon the position of the rotor with respect to the windings stator windings and we will show that these depend upon the angular position of the rotor and since the rotor is rotating the angular position of the rotor keeps on changing and therefore these inductances are going to be function of 
angular position theta. Okay. Now to understand this, let us first start with the stator self inductances. Stator self inductances. Now here, the stator self inductance is denoted by the symbol L A A. Okay, and how when we define this stator self in inductance, the basic definition is the flux linking the phase A winding divided by the current. That is the self inductance of phase A winding with uh, no currents in other windings. That is when only current I A is flowing and we find out what is the total flux linking the stator winding A. That is the self inductance of stator winding A, L A A. Now, when the current I A is flowing, okay, then the MMF, MMF which is produced due to the flow of current is N A into I A. And this MMF is sinusoidally distributed along the surface of the stator or along the air gap. Okay? Because the stator is supposed to produce a sinusoidally distributed MMF. Okay? And this MMF has the maximum value along the D axis. Right? Its, it, its peak is along the D axis. And when you go again uh, away from the d-axis on both sides, this is going to decrease. Now here, this diagram shows this diagram shows the MMF <coughs> produced by the stator phase A. That is, the, I am just showing this is the this is the axis of phase A. Okay, and the MMF produced by the axis of phase A, uh, uh, MMF produced by the phase A or stator phase A is having its peak along the D axis. This is the D axis. I'm sorry, this is the not D axis, I am sorry. This is the axis of the phase A. The axis of the phase A. Okay? This is a little correction. This is the axis of phase A. Now, what we do is we split this MMF into two components. Both are having the sensorial distribution. One having its peak along d axis another having its peak along q axis therefore this this graph red graph which i have shown here this shows the sinusoidal distribution having its peak coinciding with d axis this is the again sinusoidal distribution its peak is coinciding with q axis and the q axis uh, is leading d axis by 90 degrees okay now This can be seen here in this diagram that the MMF produced by the stator right along its on axis that is the MMF produced by the stator winding of phase A right is having its maximum value along its on axis that is axis of phase A. Now, we have assumed actually that the rotor is rotating in the anti-clockwise direction. Therefore, axis of or the D axis is shown here and Q axis is leading by this. Therefore, what we do is that this MMF is resolved into two components, one along D axis, another along Q axis. The D axis component is Na Ia cos theta and Q axis component is minus Na Ia sin theta. Okay? Now, with this MMFs, we can find out what will be the flux produced in the air gap along this D and Q axis. Okay. Now, here we are showing that the MMF, MMF AD, that the MMF due to, due to current flowing in the stator A phase and its component along D axis A D is equal to N A I A cos theta and these are the peak values. Therefore, when I A attains this peak value, this will also become this varying, this is varying along as the I A is varying. Then the along the Q is minus I A N A sin theta. Okay. Now, the flux produced along these two axes because of this MMF, 
can be written as MMF into PD that is 5G AD. G stands for air gap or gap flux. Okay? The 5G AD is equal to NAIA cos theta into PD and 5G AQ is equal to minus NAIJ sin theta into PQ. Now, here this is the MMF and to relate this MMF to the flux, we are using this term PD. That of PD is in general a permeance coefficient, we call it. It is not only the absolute value of permeance, but all other parameters which relate flux to MMF. Because this is the MMF only, this is the flux. Okay? Now, what is done is we again make use of this phasor diagram. The flux which is produced along d axis in the air gap, flux which is produced along q axis in the air gap, we resolve them back along the axis of phase A. That is, when you resolve this, right, then this component will come out to be equal to phi g a d cos theta, and the second component comes out to be phi g a q sin theta with negative sign because there was negative sign already attached with it. And therefore, we can say that the air gap flux due to current flowing in the stator winding A only comes out to be equal to N A I A or substituting these values from the previous equations in this form. The N A I A P D cos square theta plus P Q sin square theta. And this expression when simplified, it can be put in the form N A I A into P D plus P Q by 2 plus P D minus P Q by 2 cos 2 theta. Now, here this is very important point to understand that the air gap flux produced air gap flux produced by current flowing in the stator winding of phase A is equal to a is proportional to a term P d plus P q by 2 and another term P d minus P q by 2 cos 2 theta. That is this term does not depend upon angular position while this term depends upon the angular position. Now, we define the uh, inductance. The inductance the self inductance of the stator phase A due to gap flux only the flux which is produced in the air gap L g A A is equal to N A effective number of turns into the air gap flux divided by I A and this comes out to be we substitute the value of phi g A A it comes out to be N A square P d plus P q by 2 plus P d minus P q by 2 cos 2 theta. Okay? Therefore, this can be put in the form that is this is your L g A is the self inductance of phase A due to gap flux only which can be put as a, a constant terms L g 0 plus another term L a a 2 cos 2 theta right because as I have seen I have told you that the permeance of the air gap varies as a uh, uh, with the position of the rotor and there we found actually that it has a second harmonic variation. Here also we find there is a constant term plus a quantity varying as a function of that is cosine 2 theta. Okay? Now, to make the whole thing more complete there is some uh, leakage flux which does not cross the air gap. Okay? And this leakage flux also contributes to the self inductance of the stator phase and therefore, when you account for the leakage flux, then we can say that the self inductance L A A of the stator phase is equal to self inductance due to leakage flux plus L G A A which I have obtained in the previous equation that is due to the gap flux. And then when you combine these two terms, we can see here that this mutual inductor or this second term 
will not be affected by the leakage and therefore, this leakage term is combined and you find here that the self inductance can be written as L A A O plus L A A 2 cos 2 theta. Now, this is the most important equation to understand that how the self inductance of the stator phase varies as the position of the rotor varies, the angular position of the rotor. Now, <coughs> this angular position is measured with respect to axis of phase A. Now, this graph shows the plot for the variation of the self inductance of stator phase A as function of theta okay. and you can ident uh, identify here that this is the term L A A 2 which varies this L A 2 is constant and this is another term which called L A O and the total inductance of the stator phase is now written as L A equal to L A O plus L A 2. These two terms are constant, these constants, these are constant, they do not depend upon the angular position. Therefore, the total self inductance depends upon the angular position, but these two coefficients are constant. Now, when we perform the similar exercise for phase B and phase C, since the the axis of phase B and phase C are displaced by 120 degrees with respect to axis of phase A, right. Therefore, the expressions which we have written here for self inductance of phase B, right, will be of the same form except theta is replaced by theta minus 2 pi by 3. And since this, the uh, uh, everything remains same, therefore, these terms are also same. Therefore, it is not LBBO, but LBBO is same as LAO. Okay. Similarly, we write down LCC as LAO plus LA2 cos 2 times theta plus 2 by 3. Okay. Very straightforward. Now, next very important point we have to understand is the stator mutual inductances. The stator winding mutual inductances. Again, we will see that the stator winding mutual inductances also are function of uh, rotor position that will be function of theta. Now, here, here when the when the axis of the rotor is in the middle of the axis of stator phase A and stator phase B, then at that position the mutual inductance between A and B will be maximum. For example, the mutual inductance between phase B and C when you try to see, it will be maximum when theta is theta is uh, 30 degree minus 30 degrees and 150 degrees. These, these are the positions which you have to see. Okay. Uh, using this information, the flux linkages, flux linkages of phase B when current is flowing in phase A is are obtained. They want to find out the flux mutual flux, uh, right? There is flux linking, flux linking phase B due to current flowing in phase A. Okay, and then once you find out this flux. Okay, we can find out the mutual inductance because the, the inductance is the flux linkage by the current. Mutual inductance will be the flux linking phase B due to current in phase A and then you divide by the current you will get the mutual inductance. Here, here uh, following the same approach as we have done for uh, done for um, uh, obtaining the self inductance, the, the air gap flux, flux again the gap flux linking phase B with when current is flowing in phase A is obtained in this form that is this is obtained in terms of 
these two components phi g a d and phi g a q. That is this is the air gap flux along d axis, this is the air gap flux along q axis and after making the substitutions we find actually that mutual flux comes out to be equal to Na i A minus P d plus P q by 4 plus P d minus P q by 2 cos 2 theta minus 2 pi by 3. Okay. Now, <coughs> you can easily see here actually that if you substitute here to make this quantity 1, to make this quantity 1, you can find it out actually uh, what should be the value of theta, right. And since this term is minus here, P d is always greater than P q, permeance along the d axis is more than the permeance along q axis. And therefore, since this is minus, to have this also minus so that the total quantity is added up, okay, you can find out the value of this angle theta. And you will find actually that when theta occupies uh, either 30 degrees or 150 degrees, it will be maximum. Now, this, this uh, mutual inductance can be obtained as L G B A divided by after dividing the, the expression for phi G B A by I A. Okay. Therefore, the expression for L G B A comes out to be in this form. Okay. Now, again it can be written as minus 1 by 2 L G O L G 0 plus L A B 2. Now, if you very carefully examine then this L A B 2 L A B 2 will be of the same amplitude as L A A 2 L A A 2 right. Similarly, you can find out the mutual inductance between B and A and we, this B A mutual inductance between the phase A and B that is equal B A or A B they are always equal okay? and the expressions are written in the form minus L A B O minus this. Now, here actually when you have written in this form what we have done is that we have accounted for some some leakage flux which also links to windings right because there are there is a air gap flux and there is some flux which does not cross the air gap and once you account that we can write down the these mutual inductances in this form okay again you can see that this depends upon theta similarly you can write down for bc and cb it comes out to be in the similar form and similarly, L A C and L C A can be written like this. Okay. This diagram shows the variation of mutual inductance as a function of theta between the two stator phases. That is here we have shown the L A B and you can easily say that first thing which we see here is that the, the mutual inductance is all through negative. Okay, and its variation is shown in this form. Therefore, this this quantity, a constant quantity is L A B O, and over this is superimposed this sinusoidally varying quantity, and the variation is as a function of two theta. Therefore, what we have seen till now is that the self inductances of the stator phases or stator windings and mutual inductances between the stator windings. Now, we will consider the mutual inductances between stator and rotor windings, stator and rotor winding. Now, so far the mutual inductances between stator and rotor windings are concerned that they are function of angular position, but they are not because of the variation in permeance here. Because so far the rotor is concerned, rotor will always see the same permeance because the stator, the stator is having the uh, uh, uniform shape right and therefore, so far the so far actually the, the rotor is concerned rotor bindings are concerned right the, the there will be no variation in permeance. 
Now here, the mutual inductances between the stator and rotor bindings vary because of angular position. Now, for example, if you take take the stator phase A and field winding, in case the axis of these two bindings coincide, they will have maximum mutual inductance. In case the axis of stator winding of phase A and the field winding they are in quadrature, the mutual inductance will be zero, right? And since the rotor is having rotating, it occupies different positions. Therefore, when it coincides, when the axis, direct axis of the rotor coincides with the stator uh, uh, phase A axis or B axis or C axis, they will have maximum mutual inductance. And when the quadrature axis of the rotor coincides with the stator phase axis, okay, phase A axis or phase B axis or phase C axis, then the mutual inductance will be zero. Okay. Therefore, we can write down this mutual inductance L A F D equal to L uh, L A F D into cos theta. When suppose as we know that the theta is measured, right? Considering the axis of phase A as reference, and theta is the angle between the d axis and axis of phase A. Okay. Therefore, when theta is zero, the mutual inductance between the stator stator winding and the field winding is maximum at 90 degrees it is <coughs> now so the the amortizer on the direct axis is is also going to have the inductance mutual inductance in the form l a k d cos theta right because this the the direct axis amortizer is having axis coinciding with the field winding right and therefore the variation is going to be similar now the mutual inductance between the quadrature axis amortizer and the stator winding will be written by the formula l a q q cos of theta plus pi by 2 why this theta is replaced by theta plus pi by 2 because q axis is leading d axis by 90 degrees therefore this can be written as minus l a q sin theta Now, what we have seen here is till now, we have obtained the expression for the self inductances of the stator windings, mutual inductances between the stator windings and we have also obtained the mutual inductances between the rotor windings and stator winding and we have seen that all these are function of angular position. Okay? Now, we again come to our fundamental equations that is the stator voltage equations stator circuit equation E A equal to P psi A minus R A I A and we have seen that the flux linkage of phase A is now written as minus L A I A minus L A B I B minus L A C I C plus L A F D I I F D L A K D I K D plus L A K D I K K. Therefore, now in this equation, we substitute the expression for L A A, L A B, L A C, L A F D, L A K D, L A K Q. Okay? Then we get the expression for flux linkage of phase A as minus I A into L A A. Plus I B into L A B O L A B 2 cos 2 theta plus pi by 3 this plus sign has come because there was negative sign here earlier. Okay, when you see this mutual inductance there was a negative sign therefore it becomes plus here. Similarly, you have I C into L A B O plus L A O cos 2 theta minus pi by 3 and so on. That is what we have done is that in this exp in this basic equation we have substituted the value of all the inductances okay, which were all found to be function of theta. Similarly, we can write down the flux linkage of phase B and flux linkage of phase C 
they are exactly similar except you will find that theta is replaced by theta plus 2 pi by 3 or theta minus 2 pi by 3. Now, after having written the equations for the stator windings or voltage equations for the stator windings, <coughs> we can write down the rotor circuit voltage equations. The in the rotor on the rotor we have considered three windings, one field winding and two amortizers. Okay, therefore E F D the voltage applied to the field winding is equal to P psi F D plus R F D I F D. Now here since we have assumed that the current is entering the field winding, then therefore the term here is P psi F D plus. This is a simple uh, R L circuit. Suppose you have R L circuit then the applied voltage is equal to the rate of change of flux linkages plus voltage drop in the resistance. Okay. Then the other two equations these relate to the direct axis amortizer winding amortizer circuit and quadrature axis amortizer circuit. Here since there is no external applied voltage therefore, we have 0 term here. Okay. Therefore, there are three basic uh, uh, rotor circuit voltage equations. We have three basic stator circuit voltage equations. Now, let us write down the expression for these flux linkages <coughs> psi F d, psi k d and psi k q. Now, psi F d can be written as, written as L F F d that is the self inductance of field winding into I F d plus mutual inductance of the mutual inductance between between field winding and amortizer that is L A K D into I K D okay. and there will be no there will be no flux linking the field winding due to the quadrature axis amortizer because the the two axes are the, 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 the displacement of 90 degrees between the two axes okay? and therefore, there is no flux linkage contributed by, by amortizer on the quadrature axis to field axis flux linkage. Then this, these three terms are here L A F D into I A cos theta, L A F D into I B cos theta minus 2 by 3 and L A F D plus I C into cos theta plus 2 by 3. That is when the three stator currents are carrying the values I A, I B and I C and depending upon their mutual inductances, this will be the flux linkage in the stator winding. Now, uh, one point which I wanted to mention here is the so far the self inductances of the rotor circuits are concerned that is self inductance of field winding, self inductance, uh, inductance of amortizers, they do not depend upon the angular position. Because, because so far actually the, the, the magnetic circuit is concerned for computing the self inductance of rotor circuits are concerned, these the self inductances are constant. And they, since the, we have assumed actually the uniform internal surface of the stator, okay, and therefore no variation of reluctance so far actually the rotor circuits are concerned. Similarly, similarly the uh, mutual inductance between the rotor circuits, the mutual inductance between the field winding and amortizer on the d axis, they will be fixed. They do not depend upon the rotor position, right? Therefore, for example, L F K D is a mutual inductance between the field winding and direct axis amortizer. This is a constant quantity. They won't depend upon the rotor position. Now, this similarly you can write down the flux linkage of amortizer on D axis and flux linkage of amortizer in the Q axis. Okay. Now, with this, with this. 
we have developed the complete mathematical model that we have written three stator circuit equations we have written the rotor circuit equations we have expressed all the inductances as function of currents and i'm saying not uh, all the flux linkages as function of currents and the self and mutual inductances now this that is uh, this is what is called complete model of the system however the basic problems which arise are due to due to the variation of these inductances with the variation of rotor angular position and to overcome this problem and seeing very carefully the expression for if you see the expression for psi fd we find here a term la fd that is along with this term you have ia cos theta plus ib cos theta minus 2 pi by 3 therefore this has prompted us to obtain a transformation and once we go use this transformation we will find that the equations can be simplified and we can make these equations equations where they do not exclusively depend upon or the inductances do not depend upon the angular position okay the the transformation is of this form that is we define we define this term ia cos theta plus ib cos theta minus 2 pi by 3 plus ic cos theta plus 2 pi by 3 <coughs> multiplied by some constant kd as id that is this three terms ia cos theta ib cos theta minus 2 pi by 3 ic cos theta plus 2 by 3 this complete term multiplied with some constant kd is denoted by a term id similarly we do not another term iq as minus ikq multiplied by ia sin theta plus ib sin theta minus 2 pi by 3 plus now this with this with this uh, assumption or this transformation if we consider a balanced three phase currents that is ia equal to im sin omega st ib equal to im sin omega st minus 2 pi by 3 ic equal to im sin omega st plus 2 pi by 3 okay that is we are assuming that the three stator currents are balanced with this three stator currents to be balanced okay what we do is if you substitute and find out the expression for id the id will come out to be as kd into 3 by 2 im sin omega st minus theta this is very important term that is with this transformation this id uh, current id is equal to kd into 3 by 2 im sin omega st minus theta now if you assume kd equal to 2 by 3 if you assume kd equal to 2 by 3 then the the peak value of id will be same as im okay and therefore in the parks transformation parks transformation kd and kq are taken equal to 2 by 3 that is iq will also be taking the same minus iq into 3 by 2 im cos omega st minus theta okay and therefore if i take kq equal to 2 by 3 then the peak value of <coughs> iq will be same as im okay now to make this uh, model complete complete and assuming that suppose the three currents are not symmetrical right then we can define one zero sequence current io as 1 by 3 ia plus ib plus and with this definition the transformation looks like this is very interesting thing this transformation looks like this that we can say id iq io a vector consisting of d axis current q axis current and i0 these three currents can be written in terms of the phase currents ia ib and ic in terms of this 
matrix and this is called transformation matrix that is transformation matrix is 2 by 3 the first row is cos theta cos theta minus 2 pi by 3 cos theta plus 2 pi by 3 ok similarly, similarly the second term and third with this now inverse transformation that is if you write down the expression for phase currents in terms of the dqo currents then this can be written in this form cos theta minus sin theta 1 like this this is called inverse that is sometimes if you know the value of id iq and io we can find out the phase currents now interesting thing which happens is that if i substitute the values of the phase currents in terms of dqo components right then i get the expression for flux linkage in the d axis called psi d that is the 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 all these fluxes flux linking phase a phase b and phase c right they are also transformed currents are also transformed that by applying this transformation we find that the flux linkages can be written in terms of uh, the constant coefficients that is psi d is equal to minus l a o plus l a b o plus 3 by 2 l a o l a 2 ok then l a f d i f d plus l a k d i k d that is here the coefficient of i d is a constant term it does not depend upon angular position theta similarly for psi q and psi u right we define we define these terms l d equal to l a o plus l a b o plus 3 by 2 l a o similarly l q and l 0 are defined when you make the substitution we can write down the flux linkage psi d as minus l d i d plus l a f d i f d plus like this similarly when you apply the d q o transformation the flux linking the rotor circuits are also expressed in terms of the rotor currents rotor currents rotor circuit currents and the dqo components of currents and again you find actually that these flux linkages as well as these three flux linkages which are transformed quantities are are independent of rotor angular position and this is what it helps the whole thing and once you substitute these expressions in our stator circuit equations we get this equation in the form e d equal to p psi d minus psi q p theta minus r a i d e q is equal to p psi q minus psi d p theta minus r a i q and e o equal to p psi o psi 0 minus r a i o now these are the three basic equations which are written in terms of transformed quantities or d q o uh, terms or sometimes we get in DQO frame of presentation. Okay. Uh, today I uh, have discussed the basic basic circuit equations of the synchronous machine and discuss the DQO transformation and its importance. Ultimately, we have obtained the stator circuit equations in terms of the transformed quantities. Thank you.